Hey. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday, October 3rd. And I am not Bill Soroka or Laura Bewer. Um, my name is Jen Neitzel. I am one of the co-founders of Notary Business Builder, and I am doing a little fill-in today. Laura's going to be joining us in about five or 10 minutes. Um, she, she will be on to answer all of your technical questions. Um, and Bill, you may or may not know, was at the Philly Social last week. And so he is working his way home. And so that's why he is not on today's call. So he asked I hop on um, to help out and I'm always happy to do that. I love this TNT crowd. You guys always bring the most amazing questions. So if, like I said, if you don't know, um, I'm Jen Neitzel. I'm the creator of Marketing for Notaries, uh, formerly Signing Agent Marketing. Uh, you might have heard of that. We've just recently transitioned to marketing for notaries, and it's been a really fun, fun ride. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to put in the chat some links because we're going to start with some announcements today. And the first one is if you're a notary looking for some marketing help, go check out marketing for notaries. All right. Um a few other announcements I wanted to go over that Bill asked me to go over was the Success Summit, the National Notary Association Success Summit. God, say that 15 times fast. Um, that's coming up October 19th. They have been so unbelievably kind and generous with um, Bill and Laura and myself, and they are dedicating the entire fall summit to uh, a notary business builder and the certified notary trust delivery agent program. We are so excited and we are all bringing our A game with some amazing learning um, uh, opportunities that we are bringing you. So if you would like to sign up for that, and I hope you do, um, it is $79 for I think four or five hours. It's a great value. And um, I'm going to post the link in the chat. That is not it. it. Well, that's it. But you can also get to it this way. Oh, who are we looking at here? This, is someone sharing a screen? I'm sorry. I wasn't trying. I was trying to put it in the chat. Oh, my God. Like, I'm sorry. It posted like at the same time that I was doing uh my thing in the chat and I thought I messed something up. So. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. No, thank you for uh pointing that out. Okay, here's another shorter link if you would like to get to that. We would love for you to register and see you there. Uh, all three of us are bringing three different individual uh trainings and we're so excited. I the one I am most excited about to share with you guys is Laura's. She is doing um, a program that's called Show Me the Money. And oh, there's Laura. I see you. You're back, Laura. Hey. And if you guys have not heard her Show Me the Money talk, you've got to sign up for the National Notary Summit uh, on October 19th and come hang out with us for a half a day. It's going to be a great time and we are really looking forward to it. Links are in the chat. So Laura, Bill had asked me to go over a few announcements. Did mm -hmm. you get started now and take a break with some announcements in between since you are here now? Yeah, we can do that. That would be great. All right. Uh, and well, for the add on to what Jen said, cause you know, I love to piggyback with Jen <laughs> our ongoing jokes. Um, and that is, even if you've heard my show me the money, I have added that and I have a whole front end section that's going to go on top of that. So there's going to be a lot of new material in there as well. It's exciting. Okay. I, I love that talk that you give and I could listen to it. Honestly, I, I've heard it more than once. And each time I hear it, something different and there's <laughs> so much value to it when it comes to managing your money. It's just such an important thing. Um, but yeah, let's jump in, Laura. Let's get started. Let's Who start. has some questions? So remember, uh, we love when you have your cameras on, uh, especially when you're asking the question, if you can't have it on all the time. 
Also, if uh, if they're on, remember we see and hear everything. So if they shouldn't be on, then don't have them on. Because <laughs> we don't want to see more. We don't want to know more than we need to. Uh, and then the other thing is when you're ready to ask your question, raise your virtual hand. And that might be under more or under reactions, depending on your version of Zoom. Uh, and you can start doing that now if you want. So we can stack up questions and get ready. And what we would love is for you to identify yourself, what's your name and what's your state, especially when you're asking state-specific questions because the answer can change, right? So that would be wonderful. And then get right into your question. And if we need more information, we'll ask for it. So you ready, Jen? I'm ready. I am ready. Let's oh, do one, it. One more thing. There's probably a lot of action going on in the chat, and that usually happens. You can connect with somebody that might be in your state or your area. Sometimes uh, there are questions that are best answered in the chat where there's a lot of opinions about a particular question. And so sometimes we'll also throw that to the chat. So let's start with Patricia. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm from Delaware, and I'm so sorry about that before. I was trying to um, put my question in the chat, show that um, form that I have a question about. No, um, I, about it. I am actually on my way to my first adoption notary. Uh -huh. um, Great. And the form, I, I pulled up um, information online just to see, you know, a, a mock, whatever form. But I have this form here, and it said it's three places on one page that I would sign, but I'm just wondering, do I stamp it three times on one page? So or that? yeah, and here's really how that rule works is for every signature that there's certificate language, then that's yeah. a notarization. So they might sign it in three places, but if there's only a certificate at the end, then that's the, that's the signature that you're going to be notarizing for um on the page is the one page where both parents are to sign and it basically says sworn to and subscribe um before me on mm -hmm. this day yada yada and then it says notary public or clerk uh clerk of court okay so that's signed. your notary wording patricia okay and that yes. has to happen at every signature if they need all three signatures notarized. If they yep. only provided you wording for one of the signatures, then that's the signature that gets notarized, even though okay. they may have signed the document multiple times. Okay, but it's on one page. So every time, every area on that one page I see, I am to stamp it the three times though. At that's each not what I said. Time. Well, let's oh, try no, that again. Patricia, I'm sorry. you have to see the notary wording, the one that you just read to me, for yes. all three places. Do you have notary wording for each signature? Yes. Then it you would stamp and you would sign and stamp all three places. It's only uh, when you don't have a okay. uh, notarial wording for each signature that you would reduce the number of times to just when you have that notarial certificate. So okay. sometimes you'll have three signatures and only one certificate. Then you're only gonna sign and stamp one time. In your case, you have three separate certificates, so then you will stamp and sign three separate times, and it's three separate notarizations for each of those people. Okay, and I was just I was just concerned because it's all on the same page on the same. It page. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, got you. All it right, can that was be my all answer. on the same page. Absolutely. Okay. okay, I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Bye. and thanks, uh, Patricia, for asking that question, because I'm sure there's other notaries who would be unsure about that. Uh -huh. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, that was a great question. I was thinking that myself, Laura. I was like, I bet a lot of people have that question. Yeah. Okay. But uh, let's see. Uh, Jen, can you lower her I hand? I got and... her hand lowered. And great. Stephanie, Stephanie. is next. Hey, Stephanie. Hi. Good to see you. Hey, it's Stephanie from Washington State. I have a quick Laura question. Um, I'm sure you've talked about this before and I've forgotten, but I've been getting um, a lot of documents from out of state that have notary blocks that say acknowledged, subscribed and sworn. <laughs> and I, I was just wondering if that's ever allowed in any state. Um, and do you just add an acknowledgement and a jurat when you run into that? Or, you know, it, first of all, 
It depends on every state. I'm not aware of any state that has a hybrid certificate set up for that. Mm -hmm. And you would look in your own state's list of the different certificates that you have available. Usually on your secretary of state, they'll say, here's examples of these certificates, what they look like. Um, however, with that said, Arizona is an exception currently as they do have one. Mm -hmm. uh, although their secretary of state's office has said, don't use it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't have hybrids here, but it's still there and it's in their own handbook. So they're struggling uh, with that at the, at the current moment. But for all the other states, I'm not aware of any state that is set up with a hybrid certificate. And mm -hmm. how I would replace it is with an acknowledgement and a threat. They obviously want both. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Nice. We don't Stephanie. have hands at the moment. So Jen, why don't you make some announcements and maybe we'll get some hands up. All right. Well, the next announcement that Bill had asked me to make was for the Notary Business Builder Fall Promotion. So you guys know that we have restructured Notary Business Builder and it is now priced, uh, we've removed the Tom app, it's now priced at $58 a month. And for the fall promotion, we are also including the um my legacy or the legacy vault which from which is from my life and wishes this is an online vault to keep all your personal information your bank accounts your passwords everything your family will need when you pass away or when you become incapacitated um, it's a $697 value. You guys, it's incredible. Um, it's, it's a, I love mine. Um, I update it every time passwords change or anything changes. It's, it's a great value for anybody. Um, but especially for us small business owners. So I'm going to put the link in the chat. If you want to check out the fall promotion and join us at notary business builder. All right, Melissa Dominguez, your hand is up. Hello again. This is our second call today, Melissa. Hi, hi. Um, I have a quick question on that. We give them both. Would you make a copy of the same document? Melissa, I'm going to, Melissa, it is, we are really having difficulty hearing you. Does that help? Does yes, it, it does help or help. no? Yes. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. On the hybrid certificate, are we going to make uh, another copy of that document and add an acknowledgement to one and a direct to one, or do we put two on one document? For most states, you would just put two to one document because you can notarize both ways. There are a couple of exceptions. Colorado was one where they don't like that. They want a copy and you'll put one on one and one on the other. Colorado is the one that comes to mind. There could be another state, but in California, you can put both on one. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. Sarissa, um, did you, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I saw your hand go down. I did we so get your Yes, you did say my name correctly. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> So my question, I thought about it after a while and I realized that Laurel's in California. So I don't know if you have the answer to this. So I work directly with a couple of attorneys, um, but I also have some, I'm in Virginia. Uh, I also have some connections with other states that don't have Ron. Um, and I'm doing mostly estate planning work there as well. So mm -hmm. have you run into a lot of, challenges with doing Ron and doing estate planning for outside of your state. And again, like I said, I, I thought about it and I know that you're in California, so you directly right. are not. Oh yeah, well, California, we're not doing that work directly, although some notaries are doing what we call facilitation, which means they uh, hook themselves up with a notary in a state that does do Ron to take care of their clients and then they get a piece, the notary gets a piece of the you know of the money so in the states where we're not doing run ourselves there is a way for us to partake in that a little bit uh but i'm uh there are some issues with ron i mean those of you who are doing it would know 
uh, you are tech support. Your, mm -hmm. your clients don't know what they're doing. First of all, they don't know their documents. Second of all, they don't know how to work on the computer. Uh, so there's issues there. Then you've got your ID going through that. If you're having to do the KBAs, if they can't pass that, then there's an issue. Um, there are um, other problems with Ron as well. Uh, however, uh, I do not do Ron here. I've done a few facilitations uh, and the ones that I did didn't have a problem. And of course, there are a couple of lawsuits already out there. And they're in California. Uh -huh. And we're not even doing Ron. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, yeah, there, so, there are some. You know, uh, one of issues. the challenges I come across with uh, potential clients uh, that I'm trying to uh, prospect um, are the challenges with the uh, will being notarized virtually and witnessed virtually. Um, yeah. Everything else pretty much in Virginia can be uh, notarized and witnessed with but the exception of, of the will. So our legislature passed it, but they're super slow. Yeah. Pretty good, so I know. Um, well, Carissa, <laughs> here's Carissa, yeah. if you say you uh, did Ron for somebody in California, the will must be a wet signature. It cannot be done via Ron. So that document cannot be processed. Wow. Okay. So anybody who's trying to do estate planning for California via Ron, because a California person can use the services of an out-of-state notary, they may not oh. do so with a will. A la uh, the pour-over will or a last will, either one may not be done via Ron. They, for California, it must be a wet signature on a piece of paper. Oh, and there are some that. other states like that. And then there's a lot of states where it's fine to be electronic. Right. So you have to know that. Yeah. Right? And the will is the one thing that's very specific that are mm -hmm. is causing a lot of people's questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Now, if you're also looking at challenges, like just to get the business, uh, and and that is make sure that when you're you're know, using social media, you're advertising, whatever you're doing, use terms that the public would understand. They don't know what Ron is. We do, but they don't. So make sure you use terms that they could understand. Like yeah, I'm pretty much things. calling it digital signing. So okay, all right, very good. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Great question. Okay, our next question is from Jeanette Thompson. Hi, Jeanette. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. I'm from Michigan. Um, and just, just to piggyback on that Ron situation, and you know, uh, I am Ron certified here in Michigan, but I specifically don't do Ron other than uh, for a title company, I don't know if I should say it, but Amrock, because theirs is easy peasy. But you know, when you do it independently, you know, uh, like like you say, you run into tech problems. The people on the other end, they don't know how to do it. And, and I don't get into filling anything out. I don't want to fill out nothing except my notorial. And then with, with AMROC, that's all I do. All that stuff is, uh, so that's why I don't do Ron other than AMROC or if somebody else had that same kind of platform because it's just too too hard for me to navigate. So I just that was just a comment. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for telling us that. Okay. Thanks, Jeanette. All right. Our next question comes from Sporjo. Sporjo? Yeah, this is for Laura or Jen. You know the notarizer in Ohio, Amy? Yeah. Amy she, yeah. Do you know if she does her own programming or she got a programmer or does she use a uh, someone else's format for her run? Uh, I can't get a hold of her, so that's what I'm asking. It's her own deal. Okay, so she yeah, does her own she, programming she, and that. Yeah, okay. she's a, a, she's a genius. Okay, okay, she's a, okay, she's a programmer. Okay, that's what I was doing. Okay, thank you. And mm -hmm. and just so you know, she's been, um, she was one of the co-hosts of the Philly Social that was this past weekend. Right. So she's been in Philly for the past week, and that's probably why you have, it's just haven't heard back from her. It's just, you know, she's been busy, so... Um, I'm sure she'll get back to you, but, um, yeah, she is, she does her own thing. It's incredible. Thank, Thank you. for you. Sure. Um, and Salisha, yeah, if you want to put her number in the chat, that's great. 
Um, I also see that we had a question in the chat from Boo. She's at the library, so she's not able to talk to us today. But the question was, can you cancel a signing once you accept? How do you do it politely? I ha she has a scheduling conflict. Right. And I'm assuming, Boo, that you are talking about an assignment that you accepted from a signing service. So, um, Laura, how do you cancel uh, an appointment that you have already accepted? Well, I think a couple of things. One is do it as soon as you can, as soon as you know, mm -hmm. right? Because it gives them more time. The other thing is I offer up other notaries who are certified or qualified to meet that company's requirements, which typically is the NNA background check and they're certified as a loan signing agent. Um, and so I, I let them know I have a couple of colleagues that I checked and, and they're available. I'd be happy to share their information and perhaps they can take care of it from here on out. I so I do things the same way, Boo. Just um what I I I normally try and find someone and just that I know is already signed up with that particular signing service or approved at that title company. And I will cancel my I will just tell them something's come up and I'm unable to meet the assignment. Right. However, I have found Susie and she is available and willing. Um, so you don't have to get back on the phone and keep dialing to find somebody or send out another text, um, you know, to the masses. And then I let them say yes or no to that suggestion or not. Yeah. And then the but, last thing, uh, just to add to that is I don't, I don't like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't apologize all over yourself. I mean, something's come up, you can't do it, but thank them. Thank them for calling you in the first place and you appreciate their business. Exactly. I mean, stuff comes up. Um, and this is something, um, honestly, that that Bill has taught me over the years. And that is, if you have to cancel something, th I mean, life happens, you guys. We should know this more than anybody, notaries, because our jobs can be just yeah. so last minute and schedules change on a dime. And, you know, just it happens so quickly. Um, you as a professional, you don't owe anyone an explanation you, and, and, or an apology. You know, I mean, you don't have to lead with, I'm so sorry, but my doctor, this was the only time they could re, you know, schedule it. And, and I'm so sorry. I know I already accepted the appointment, but uh, that it doesn't make you look professional doing that decline, offer an apology. Um, don't lead with, I'm sorry, I guess is what I meant to say earlier. And, and just let them know that you have done the best you can to find somebody to cover their needs. I think that's the absolute best way to handle that. So that's a great question. Hey, right. Larry, you decided to ask us that question. You put your hand down and then you put it back up. <laughs> yeah. Yes, actually it was because it was kind of answered by Matt, Matt Miller on Facebook. But since we started talking about Ron, I, I just thought that I would mention my concern here. Um, mm -hmm. I, we we're talking about the new bill that's been passed here in California for our Ron. Mm -hmm. And the part that said that current notaries, people who have an outstanding commission would mm -hmm. have to re would have to resign their commission right. and re-enroll. Right. Which I thought that can't. But Matt says that that also means you have to go through the whole process again. That's right. Not just technic not just a technicality. No. Or no, you have to start all over. And I was like, it would almost be worth it if, like, for instance, my current commission ends uh, 2027. So it would almost seem like it'd be worth it to not try and re-enroll or be recommissioned until mm -hmm. 2030, when this is supposed to go into effect. Well, we don't know if it will go into effect. That's assuming Secretary of State is good to go on that. And yes, that's just one of the things that's in there and there's nothing we can do about it right now. And that is how it works for California. So for instance, it's going to be seven years before we can even do anything uh, about this. So I won't be doing wrong. <laughs> I'm already going to be retired. You know, so like, for me, it doesn't matter, but if I was, if it was happening right now, then that's what would have to happen is that you would have to release your current one, turn in your journals, destroy your seals, and then go buy everything again. 
and pay for your training again, plus a two hour training for that. So there's a lot of investment for you as a notary to do that. Yeah. And Ron may not even be a thing by 2030. Who knows what we'll be doing there? Really? Just, <laughs> and the bond is 25 instead of 15. I was just shocked when I, when I understood yeah. that. It's like, that yeah. kind of silly. It seems like it should be the same thing as becoming a loan signing agent where you just have to take additional training. It but, is what it is, Larry. It, it is what it is. And there's really nothing we can do about it today. Yeah, I know. But I just, you do understand it correctly, if that's what you're asking. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Carla. Hi, Carla. Welcome. Hi, Laura. Hi, Jen. Hi. I just clicked, I just clicked on the chat and regarding the NNA Summit. And it says $79. And I yes. looked at my receipt. And I paid $49. What is the difference? Ah, well, up until, yeah, you got the early bird special that ran until okay. midnight on September 31st. It's when it ended. Okay. It's now $79 for the summit. Okay. Um, it was $49. So congratulations. Right. You got your $30 off. I was just wondering. I said, what is going on? So I <laughs> guess I got the yeah. discount thing. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm glad that you're not. They have not discounted the summit before. This is the first time that they've done that to help as many notaries afford it as possible. So we were very excited um, when they first offered it and then when they extended it till September 30th. So if you're just signing up for it now, there is no discount code. It's gone. It's too late. It's $79. Yeah. Sorry about Thank that, you. guys. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, they'll continue to do that as they they keep going down the road with different summits. We'll, we'll see. Um, it's my understanding. It was pretty successful at the $49 rate, but you know, they might, um, <laughs> again. yeah, in it's fact, good. let me, um, post it again. So you guys can see yeah. if you are interested in checking it out. And while you're doing that, um, Matt, uh, would you, uh, make an announcement about tonight's clubhouse? Since it was on the subject we just discussed. I'm I'm eating a salad right oh. now. <laughs> okay. Well then I will do it. So um Clubhouse, Notary Successful Journey, that particular room, my myself, Matt, and Sue Hope, uh, and Amy, I believe, will be talking about Ron facilitation in the state of California. So if you are a California notary and you want to understand how can I be a part of Ron without doing Ron myself. That's the call you want to be on. It's five o'clock Pacific time today. That is exciting. Okay. So we don't have any other hands up right now. So I'm going to pop on with another announcement. First, of course, I have to find it. Let's see. Ah, so I hope by now. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard about the certification to become a notary trust delivery agent, um, that probably means that you are not on social media because it's been everywhere on social media. And this is a program that Bill and Laura and I are so proud of. It is separate from NBB, but this program is going to certify you to work with the estate planning community, both attorney attorneys and estate planning companies to deliver a professional living trust, uh, professional living trust documents to their clients. It is very in depth. It is way more than just um, these are the documents and how you explain them. We go deep into marketing. We go deep into identifying your ideal customers. Uh, we offer pricing strategies. It is a very robust program and it will most definitely help you um, get out there and start adding trust signings to your um, services. I would actually love to see from everybody on the call, can you drop a one in the chat for me right now if you are a certified notary trust delivery agent, drop me a one and whoa, <laughs> look at all those ones. Uh -oh. Wow. First of all, thank you guys. 
Yeah. Second of all, if you're on this call and you're not a CNTDA and you want to reach out to any of these people and ask them about their experience with it, now's your time. Send them a private chat message and ask them what they think. The uh, price is $247 for a one-time certification. You do not need to restart every year. Uh, you will have lifetime access to the program. And like we, like I said, guys, it's just an amazing we're very proud of it. It's a really great training um, program uh, and very, very in-depth. Um, and like I said, anybody on the call that wants more information about it, that's not from one of the creators like Laura and myself, get reach out to somebody that just dropped a one in that chat and a private message. Hey, Stephanie, do you have a question for us? Oh yeah, I'll ask another one. <laughs> um, I, I'm wondering about bar association meetings. I think Laura, you're a part of your, your bar yeah. association. What mm -hmm. does that look like for you? You know, what are the meetings like? What it, you know, how, how is your involvement with that? So, uh, part of, uh, being a, a part of the bar association for me, they have lunch and learns once a month. Uh, a lot of times they're run by judges, uh, and they have a different topic every time. So it's very interesting to hear, even though a lot of what they're talking about doesn't apply to me directly. Uh, but uh, it puts me in the orbit of the people who are coming to listen. Um, this Friday, I think it's this Friday, I'll be going to a fall learning all day, learning estate planning specifically. Um, and so that is, I'm very excited about going to that. Um, they also might have other social events, not just uh, learning events or regular business meetings. Uh, but um, yeah, it's different topics every time. Do you feel like you make good connections at those events or is it more just to be well, in that the field? Bar, the Bar Association gave me entree to another group uh, and that's where I'm making the connections. And the group that I'm making my connections in is the Estate Planning Council. Uh, okay. with the National Association, but I couldn't join it unless A, I was part of the Bar Association, and then mm. B, I was sponsored by uh, somebody already in the group. So it's not easy to get into yeah. these uh, groups. And that one I'm making fabulous um, connections with. That's so funny. I'm in my um, estate planning coalition group mm -hmm. for my county, but not the bar. It's almost the opposite in my area. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. But okay, interesting. Well, I was just curious. To that point, Stephanie, uh, every town, every city is different. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. anybody else on the call that might be interested in joining their local bar association, I would just encourage you to make sure that they allow non-attorney affiliates, which is what you are as a notary public, non-attorney affiliates uh, to participate in their networking events. Because if you pay money to join the bar association and they don't allow you to participate in anything yeah. because you're not an attorney, what's the point, right? So just make sure you look at that mm -hmm. um, or ask that question and get clarity about that before you join um, the bar association in your town. But it is a great way to make some awesome connections. And just awesome. to continue, thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Um, just to continue, because we've been talking about... Um, uh, estate planning documents with Ron. Then we talked about certification of estate planning documents. And I just want to mention, because you should have been seeing it in social media, that it is Estate Planning Awareness Month. So it this is. is the month that there's lots of ways for you to, to reach out. There are reasons to reach out. And if you look at people's social media, they're, they're talking about it as well. So yeah. this is an opportunity to use that to, to reach out attorneys for your and for your own social media absolutely talk about you know if you are a, a certified trust delivery agent mm -hmm. so talk about that on your social media this yeah. month to engage uh and, and on linkedin especially to engage other professionals use that to create blog posts use it to send your monthly shout outs uh mm -hmm. to your prospects and your clients i mean it's it's a it, it's a great a way for you to get the word out that not only do you have advanced training and understanding of the documents, but a, a way to connect with different um, estate planning professionals in your town. So, um, Celicia, hello. Happy birthday, Celicia. Happy birthday yesterday. I give you a little <laughs> celebrate. 
It's today, isn't it? Hey, thanks. It is today. today. It's today. No. Okay. No, the, the, the post that I made on Facebook said, um, in 64 years and 364 yeah. days, oh. I could no, I could say I've never missed a flight. <laughs> However. Oh, but it can happen. And did you get a happy birthday? Song? The Felicia? day before you turned. What? Felicia, have you had a happy birthday song? I, I, I you, do you have one? Should we come off sure. mute and sing our happy I'll birthday, everybody? One. Here you go. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, um, and you know, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but we were sitting up there at the Schlesinger's Deli, um, uh, with Judy Lawrence and Bill and um, Linda from Orlando and Teresa from Virginia. And we were just chatting away and enjoying our, you know, Jewish deli food and blah, blah, blah. And I looked down and I saw Judy's phone. It said 12, 12. Now, mind you, the flight is at 105. Oops. <laughs> there we go. So, she made it home. These, it was five in the morning. I think you said earlier. Yeah, home. Home. Yeah. This is all good. And here I am. And I just wanted to give just a, brief thumbnail sketch of the Philly social weekend. And, you know, you, you guys know, I call uh, NBB and TNT like the smorgasbord and you cannot possibly take it all in. And it was just another serving you know, from the smorgasbord. I mean, it was just fantastic. It was just speaker after speaker after speaker and everything just flowed smoothly. It was a great event. It was, you know, walking distance to the, you know, right around the corner. When I say walking distance, I mean like a hundred paces. Um, and we just, we just had a fabulous, uh, great time. And just, you know, all of the things you learn, 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 learn. And I think the lady was just asking about, is it worth going because you learn something or is it worth going because you meet the people? Yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes to both. And the networking, um, ability is just so, so great to be able to meet folks from all over the country because you never know when you're going to need somebody in Pocatello, Idaho. And, you know, or, you know, you need somebody. So you talk to the gal in Montana because that's kind of close. And does she know somebody? And you get those numbers. We had three different uh, people from the Secretary of State's offices there. We had Washington, D.C. proper. We had uh, Lori Ham from Montana. We had um, uh, Mr. Pena from uh, P uh, Philadelphia, from P Pennsylvania. And these are the people that, you know, that see our apostille work, that know what they're talking about, that are, can tell us, you know, what they're looking for, what to do, uh, you know, how to make this successful. I got a call about, I don't know, an hour ago from a guy that needs an apostille for his high school transcript, his high school diploma. And he is a researcher at Mayo Clinic, but he said, I've tried this twice and I haven't been able to do it right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you call us who has taken the training and that's what makes the difference. You know, take the training, the cream rises to the top. Anybody can sign up and be a notary. Anybody can get that stamp as long as they've got a heartbeat and um, uh, 63 cents to send off their application. But the difference is, is the people like that are people that are on this call who continue, continue, continue to educate themselves, learn more, learn who, what, when, where, how, and why. And it just every single day I learn something new. And this, and when we talk about the next big boom is this uh, estate planning, it is humongous, humongous. So it was a great time. And, and thank you not, for my it's, it's not dependent on interest rates, which I love. So that's right. that is, yeah, it's amazing. So I have to ask you a question, Felicia, while I have yeah. you here. Um, did you get the crab cakes at 1518? I think that's the name of the yes, place. Yes, I did. Yes, I did get my cake. Just as good as last year. Yes, I did. I've been waiting a year for that crab cake and got another one. Yes. She goes all the way to Philadelphia from Jacksonville, Florida to get a crab cake. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Sport Joe. Did you have another question for us? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The clubhouse. How do you get on there? Is it the app or what is it? The clubhouse. Ah, let's see. Yeah. Is it's Matt's an app on your phone. Okay, so, so I got to download the app. You have to download the app. Okay. Here comes uh, Matt. Another question real quick. The uh, Bar Association, is it local, state? What is it out there in California? Local. Okay, local. Okay, okay all, right. all right. Check your county. There's probably one in every county. All right, that's what I needed. Yeah. Thank you. 
And Matt, would you be so kind as to put the information for Clubhouse this evening in the chat? Thank you so much. That would be- I'd like great. another uh, announcement. because I think it's this week. Isn't Quinn hosting a round table uh, this yeah. week, Matt? We are. We'll have our monthly round table, which is free to attend on Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. We will uh, talk a little bit about uh, any kind of last minute legislation that passed across the country. And then we're also having Amy sites come in and talk about yeah. RON facilitation. So it'll be a great opportunity for notaries uh, around the country who may not have yet become RONs or don't have the ability to do so in their state that can add this as an income opportunity to their service offerings. And um, uh, build some some uh, collaborations around the country. So I think it's a great opportunity and I hope to see you there. I will post the link in the chat on how to sign up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much. And Mr. Phil Shannon, he has an announcement for us too. Hey, Phil. Hey, everybody. I'm in Dallas, Fort Worth at the Hyatt Regency. Whoa, whoa, just... whoa. Hold on. Time out. What? <laughs> Yeah, I just spoke to a couple thousand Weagle Shield crazies and having a good old time. And I had to get away for TNT. People go, where are you, where where are are you, you going? I go, what's that? When are you leaving? Uh, I fly out at 8.55 tonight. <laughs> oh, darn it. I was going to say, I'll come down and see you and we'll have a drink or something. <laughs> well, we have a little reception starting at 4.30. So come on down. Hyatt, uh, I can't, whatever the Hyatt I is. Can't at four, yeah, I can't at 4.30. We've got our... New member orientation call. Well, any MVP. other Texas. Sorry about that, but go ahead and tell us what you want to tell us. Well, I was going to say, any other Texas notaries, come and join me. We'll have a good time. I'm interested yeah. in great people who know a lot of lawyers who can really help in regards to certain things that you guys do. But most of you know, I'm your legal shield guy. Proud to work with Laura and Bill and so many of you for so long. Uh, but five minutes after TNT, we'll be doing a short Zoom, very short, because I need to get back to my group, but a very short Zoom where we'll explain how you can protect and grow your business. Also, how you can generate an additional source of income. So if you'd like to find out more about what we do, what we're all about, how this whole thing works, how it works in conjunction with your notary business, please join me five minutes after TNT. My phone number is in the chat. Please text me. And I think Jennifer's probably looking for the information to put the link down. If she hasn't already, Jennifer's looking. Right I will. Today. I will. I will look for that. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I was will. talking Jennifer Cooper, actually, that time. Oh, Jen Cooper. Yes. Jennifer. She's a better one. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Girl. Next time you're in town, let me know in advance. I will do that. Thank you. OK, so guess what? He just prompted me to tell you that I'm going to be in North Carolina on the 13th and 14th of October, just in a couple of weeks. And I'm planning to go have some coffee at Starbucks near the Ballantine Hotel in Charlotte, North Carolina. So if there are any North Carolina notaries who would like to come have coffee with me, you're welcome. Hey, Abby, me. it's Jess. I, I accidentally hung up. I got it. <laughs> got it? Okay. All right. So, just so you know, so just reach out to me directly if that, if you want to join me when I go have my coffee over in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, and I will put your email address. Which one would you like me to put? I put the Laura Coach Me Laura. Her email address is now in the chat. If you are in North Carolina and you want to hang out with Laura and you should um, reach out and send her an email. I'm going to be in Vegas. Oh my gosh. Okay. I special announcement. I forgot. I got an email that went out about it today too. Um, I'm going to be in Vegas on uh, the, at the end of this month, I'm taking two of our four kids to celebrate their 21st birthdays. Um, so it's a big trip for us, but I'm hosting a notary meetup. I didn't want it to go by because I know we have so many notaries that live in that area. So if you want to come hang out with me on Saturday, um, October 28th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. local time. Um, I'm going to be downtown at the Circa Resort. I'm going to put this in the chat. So come hang out with me. Um, I'll send you an email so you can reserve time. So Jen Cooper, do you have a question for us? I have a question for Laura to see how big of a bag she can check on the plane to fit me in it when she goes to North Carolina. 
That's my question. Yeah. It has you know, to be it's too about tight. the bag doesn't have to be too big, Jen. If we squish, I you don't up. fold like that, Laura. <laughs> I just squish you up because I got to put you up in the overhead. <laughs> I'll go with you, have coffee with you, meet, see my sister. It'd be a fun trip, but that was my <laughs> stupid question. Okay, that was it. All right. Stick her in, and shove her in a suitcase, huh? <laughs> Fold her over, stick her in my overnight bag. It's Thank on you. <laughs> All right, Thank guys. You. Who else has questions for us today? Anybody have any marketing questions that they want to ask me while you have the marketing person on the TNT call? We've got uh, estate planning week coming up. The holidays are right around the corner. Let me just say right now on October 3rd, um, right now is when you're planning your holiday marketing, right? So you can get the stuff ordered for your pop-in so you can purchase the things you need to purchase so you can lay out your plan of who you're going to go visit and when. Uh, so any questions about marketing, I would love to answer those for you, especially, like I said, estate planning month or um, holiday marketing. It's so important. We use what we can to get our names out there. Right, Laura? Exactly. And I'm going to make one more announcement. So yeah. you might have seen, if you're a friend of mine, then you would have seen my social media Facebook for my personal page, that I will be having a educational booth um, for the public at our local uh, farmer's market on October 26th. That's in Modesto, California. So if you are a notary that's in driving distance of that, and you would like to come join us, we're going to have a booth. We're going to be handing out brochures. We're going to be answering questions that the public has about notarization and notaries and what we do and why we do it and what they need. And uh, that's the only goal for that uh, booth. We're going to be there from eight to one, and we're going to share with the public who we are and what we do and why notarization is a vital part of their important documents. So that's October 26th at the Certified Farmers Market. That's a Thursday, eight to one and feel free to join us. I have four or five notaries who are already committed that are going to be coming uh, over and we'll have a great time. And then for those who have time after, we'll go to lunch. I'm, I love that you're doing that. It's just so just starting to spread the word to the community about what we do and create an understanding because there is such a gap between the general public and what they know about notarizations and their misleading idea that it's just stamp a paper, you know, what's the big deal? I can't tell you how many times I get requests. In fact, Laura and I were on the phone together yesterday and I got a request through my Google business profile. Someone put in there, need passport and a couple other things. Can't remember what it is now. Notarized, how much? When I told him my fee, my traveling fee, why? Why are it's just stamping. Why are you charging me to meet me at Starbucks to, to notarize this stuff? Well, I have, I'm a business owner. It's my time. That's what my time is worth for a 30 minute block is, is I charge $50 for a 30 minute block of time. And that's what it's worth. If, if that doesn't meet your, what you're willing to pay, then there's the UPS store, you know, you can find another notary. You're not my customer, right? Um, and and since I've made that shift in thinking, moving away from everybody who's my customer to the ones that get it and understand, boy, life's been a lot easier. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's not as stressful. Hey, Jen, what you got for us? You got a real question? I have a real question. Okay. And then we're playing. Um, okay, so I think you guys have talked about this before, um, but when marketing to do... Um, estate planning packages. I know you've talked about pricing being different from attorneys hiring you to the public hiring you, but I'm going to ask you if I'm crazy for doing this. I haven't changed my prices for public to private. Mm -hmm. And this last round of marketing I did out. So in the last two weeks, I have done about eight my ninth will be today, um, trust packages all at maximum price. I'm wondering if I should 
lower that for the public. I know they're paying it. I'm not, you know, challenging that, but to get more of that business, not that I'm doing too bad, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's just a business decision that you might think of. If, if you are getting the quantity you want and they are paying it, uh, then you may not be overpriced. Uh, I don't know. And I don't know if you know if there are people that are not like nobody's saying no to you on the phone, right? They didn't reach out to you and then said no after you quoted your price. But you right. don't. What you don't know is anybody who didn't contact you because they could find it right. for less money. For cheaper. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you have to decide: Am I getting the quantity I want? Number one. Number two is that. Is are you? When I look at it, the reason I have a different price for the public directly is they're usually smaller packages. Right. So it's less, it, there's less work there to do. And that's why I charge less to them. So I look at it is, is the price I'm charging commensurate with the work they're asking from me? And if it's not, right. then I reduce the price. So that's just how I do it. It doesn't mean right. you have to do I well, no, I do have a bit of a scale based on the size of package and where they got it from, right? The guys I'm doing today, we got it from Legal Shield. My brain automatically went to a lower price. They go, but it's everything. It's the will. It's the, the I mean, they listed all, all the documents. I was like, that's a full trust package. Yeah, so that is a full trust I package. Gave them my full trust, I gave them my full trust package price and they're like, done. So okay. I just want to make sure that I'm maximizing who I can reach out to. I don't know even know if the question makes sense. I just so struggle Jennifer, with it a little bit. Every time I say the words, yeah. Jennifer, it's about the amount of work. The more documents, the more work, the longer you're there, the higher the price. That's really what it's about. Yeah. And so the only reason if somebody from the public had a, a binder of documents um, that they need notarized, and I see this is like any other binder I'm handling, they're going to pay the full price because I know it's going to take me that long yeah. to take care of that business. And that it's my time. That's really, it's not the number of notarizations, really. It's how much time right. will it take me to get it done. And so whether right. it's a, an attorney or whether it's a public, to me, that part doesn't matter. It's that typically I found that the public tends to have more streamlined, like four documents mm -hmm. and that's it. Right. I, I don't feel comfortable charging $175 for four documents. Uh, right. So then that I reduce it a little bit. Okay. So Thanks, Jen, I think, what do you I think, think Jen? Matt? I think Matt had something he wanted to contribute to to this answer as well, to this question as well, Matt. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Um, so Jen Cooper, I think that in in part of this uh, growth process into this new boom, uh, a lot of notaries need to qualify their customer target. Right. So do you want to target everybody? Do you want to target a specific type of customer? Uh, for example, I set my rates at uh, a level that I think targets a customer who will pay. I don't want to be bothered with someone who's going to negotiate nickel and dime who really would rather just go to the UPS store. So I think that, that might help you in narrowing down who your customer target is. Right. Yeah, I think that's okay. an excellent, excellent point, Matt. And Jen, for whatever it's worth, if it helps, um, my prices are the same, whether it's uh, from my Google business profile that I get the customer, or if it's from uh, the attorney that I, that I work with here, it's not, I don't, I don't change my pricing because I find honestly, the legal zoom docs, when they print out the whole package actually takes me longer uh, because me they're too. They're not perfectly bound with tabs and, right. you know, all of those lovely things the attorneys do for us. Um, so I feel like the price is justified. And I just want to remind you of something I posted. I think it was last week and it was probably one of the most impactful quotes that Laura and I got out of our training when she was here in um, Austin, uh, when we both went down to Austin for some Brendan Burchard training. And that is, don't price yourself based on your insecurities. Mm. Price yourself based on market realities. Sit with that for I a little that. bit. Sit with that. No, for I love that. I love yeah. it. I'm, I'm not going to change my prices, but I just, once in a while, I question myself. But you're right, Matt. My dip, The reason I'm getting full price for all of these is because when people go looking, and these are all Google, 
based, just so people understand that this not not one of those came from an attorney to me. They might have come from an attorney to the signer, but not to me. Um, my price has been the same. It's on my website and all of that. And so I'm already marketing to that demographic or whoever that's going to be. But yeah. once in a while, the question comes up in my brain, should I have a, a plan B option for other people? I don't know, but thank you guys for that help. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Keep yeah. that in the work and they're paying it. Then I think you got the right people calling you. Yeah. Keep that in mind though, about your insecurities, because sometimes you know, customers will pull at our heartstrings or, you know, um, they, they get to us sometimes or our thoughts get out of control with that. But, um, great, great. I think that helped a lot of people on this call, Jen. So thank you for bringing that up. So let's go over to Linda Edwards. Hi, Linda. Linda, are you there? You're, oh, there she is. Okay. Hey, Linda. Hi, I'm Linda from California. Hello, everyone. I have a question. It's going back to the um, notarial certificates. Um, earlier, it was mentioned that we could do high. Well, not we don't have a hybrid certificate, but we can attach both an acknowledgement and a jurat mm -hmm. if the language um, is there for as you know indicating that we need both. Now, what if there is not? What if the language is not there? There's just a document, and the the signer wants to attach both acknowledgement and jury can we do that sure we can yeah in california we may uh, notarize two different ways the same signature okay so i, I know i had a client the other day they say okay well can we have both and i was like well no but sure. i've been in both remember documents. linda mm -hmm. that's going to be 15 dollars each if you're charging by the notarization and it's two line entries okay two okay. separate so basically if they want acknowledgement and a jury we can do that yes Okay, thank you. That's all I want to know. Great question. And then our last question today. Hi, Sport Joe. You've got another question for us. Yeah, John from Ohio again. Uh, pricing, can you give us a range for the estate stuff? I know I'm in Ohio, but it varies, and I hear everybody talk pricing, but there's real no numbers thrown out except a couple. So, I think go ahead, Laura. Do you want to go first? Well, no, I was just going to, I was going to ask you, John, um, have you uh, taken the certification for the trust delivery agent? No, I did trust delivery a long time ago for some attorneys, but it's been a good while ago. So, okay. I was asking because we have um, a bonus module in there about right. pricing and I was going to refer you to that. So Laura, do you want to go ahead and answer the question? I, I just want to say that there are a lot of factors, there's geographic factors. Uh, that go into setting up your price. There is also um, what the notarial value maximum is in your state that goes into figuring that out. Uh, and the other thing is um, you need to decide what your time is worth. So you've got to put those things together. And and the range can be anywhere. I think the, the lowest I've ever taken a trust uh, is maybe $100 and the highest has been around 350. And so you can see that is a huge variation. And it just depends when I'm in California and the notarial value is at 15, so it's pretty high. Um, so it's easier for me to get higher amounts. The average I see is somewhere around 150 to 200. Okay, that's what I needed. Yeah, there's ranges. And Matt, you're correct on that. Pick your people and go with them, the ones you wanna go with and stick with them. But yeah, I agree yeah. if, if they can pay it, go with them. Makes it a lot easier to have to barter back and forth. So there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You are you are correct. You are correct. That's getting clarity on your clients and mm -hmm. and focusing on the clients that want to do business with you instead of putting your energy into focusing on the people that haven't engaged your services yet. We get lost in that sometimes. So Linda, do you have a quick question for us? Yes, I do. Another question. And I know there's but I just want a confirmation. <laughs> so you have an appointment, you have a Spanish speaking, Spanish speaking signer. You really can't, they could they understand English a little bit, but you really can't communicate with them. And I know if you cannot communicate with the signer, you cannot go through a notarization. 
But is there something else that you could do besides getting a Spanish speaking notary? Can you use Google Translate or no? That's off the tables or what? How should we approach that? No, you need to be able to speak with them directly without the assistance of third party person, equipment, anything. Yeah. Okay. So if they don't speak enough, then you're going to need to transfer them off to a notary who can speak their language. And that's why I have a bilingual notary always for me available that I can go over there because I do speak Spanish. And if they speak enough uh, English, then I will take care of them myself because I speak enough Spanish. But if it's technical documents, if it's a bigger assignment, I don't take it. I always move it to another notary. Okay. I knew that. Okay. I'll just confirm you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for all your questions today. They were fantastic. Um, thank you for being here. Laura, do you have some last minute comments before we say goodbye to everybody today? Have a super fantastic week. We're already at Tuesday. Three more days, we'll be at the weekend again. That's right. Woo thank you guys for being here. If you're an NBB member, we look forward to seeing you on the accountability call at 3 p.m. Pacific later today. If you're a new NBB member, we really look forward to seeing you at the 2.30 Pacific new member orientation. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.